Hey, you're joining me for another Delve Deeper in the lesson number 23. Great. Thanks for being here. Well, scholars can't identify the historical context for Revelation 13, 13 through 17. Okay, the magics are not historically identified. The death blow and the subsequent resuscitation of the beast is most likely just a parody of the death and resurrection of the lamb. The brand of the beast, as we've argued, most likely is an attitude of the heart and not a mark on the body. And it wasn't until a couple of later that one of the Roman empires emperors, excuse me, mandated what was called the price edict, which a person had to obtain in order to buy or sell. What was John trying to tell us about this beast from the earth? Could it be that John wants us just to understand the appeals that the beast of the earth is making to the citizens of the empire? Maybe something like, consider the gifts Rome has bestowed upon you. Peace, prosperity, a quality of life unmatched in history. Can you think of a greater benefactor than the emperor who oversees it all? Surely just a simple act of respect, a, a symbolic gesture of thanks is just a small price to pay for such an abundance. Come on, think of all that Rome has done to secure your well-being. Look, uh, we have ordered rains, markets flourish. You want for nothing. Who else has shown such care for your betterment? But the emperor, just a, a token of your loyalty, a simple act of homage. Is that too much to ask? I mean, hey, th there are those who whisper of compromise, of bending to new ways, but a faithful heart cannot betray its protector. Hmm. You know what? That same propaganda is being used today. Worship your father and his son. Worship your Holy Spirit, but also worship the system that has brought prosperity to you.